perhaps that we should try to ally with Russia against ISIS. Yes, sir. Well, of course it's a good idea. Everyone knows that except except Frito Obama. I, I definitely agree with you, and I can't believe hearing that on the Democratic debate they actually believe it's global warming. What do you expect from a man as deranged as Bernie Sanders? Would you expect anything rational from him? And what would you expect from Obama in address, Hillary Clinton? Would you expect anything rational out of that liar? I got my, I confess, I almost got my hopes up. And I've been listening to you since I was 17, and I have probably never disagreed with you on anything. And I just wanted to... How, how, how old are you now? Well, you li wait, you started listening to me when you were 17. I've been on the air 21 years. It doesn't mean you're 38, does it? No, no, sir. I'm 25. 17, 25. So you, you only have eight years into the school, the savage school of reality. All right, my friend, another book for your library, Government Zero, and now in a fifth printing. I don't know if I want to do any more of this today. I did it all yesterday. All right, let's play a little more madness. Let's show you who's running the country. I think we have to go back to Bernie Sanders saying that it's that the ISIS terrorists who are raping, murdering, killing are doing it because of global warming. I mean, you have to play this for people to understand how insane progressives are. And to show you how stupid the college girls are who, who seem to idolize this loser, listen to this loser. I know it's going to take a while. I, I, I said pull it like a rabbit out of the hat. If you missed it yesterday, we have to play it for you today. Here is a hero of the college girls, none other than Bernie Seltzer Sanders on the Savage Nation. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. And if we do not get our act together and listen to what the scientists say, you're going to see countries all Scientist. over the world. This Scientist. is what the CIA says. They're going to the be CIA. struggling over limited amounts of water, limited amounts of land right, to so grow the their Crescent crops. Crescent Information Agency, CIA, Crescent Information Agency. This is what the CIA says. What a country we have when the CIA is repeating what this moron says. Global warming is causing terrorism. So let me see if I can figure this out. Why that would mean that... 1,200 years ago, when Muhammad told his followers to go out and convert the world to Islam, he was doing it for what reason? For, because of global warming? Let's see, 1,200 years ago. Wasn't that before the Industrial Revolution? I would think even a college girl from Harvard knows that. Gee, 1,200 years ago was before the 1850s, sort of? Before the Industrial Revolution. So how do we tie that together? Arid, deserts, seeking better places, so... You mean they were conducting crusades against Europeans to take over Europe because of global warming? Well, that fits. They wanted to take over Paris and London then and steal what wasn't theirs because they were too evil to create cities in their own world. They were living in basic mud cities, and they resented the Christian cities that had evolved in Europe. Was that because of global warming the Christians were able to develop cities? Bernie, you loser, you... What is it, the carbon dioxide and the seltzer water that you drank as a boy that has affected your thinking, Bernie? What makes you so idiotic that only a man like... I'll stop right here. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800 B U I C O. that could only come in the United States of America in a world of total madness. John Kerry gave remarks this morning at the U.S. Embassy in Paris where he said the Charlie Hebdo attack had legitimacy and a rationale behind it, unlike the Paris attacks last Friday. Now, either he's crazy or he also is working for the Crescent. Secretary of State John Mad Dog Kerry's remarks at the U.S. Embassy in Paris Tuesday morning. He suggested Friday's attack was different from the Charlie Hebdo attacks early in the year because the latter had a sort of legitimacy and particularized focus behind them. I'm not writing this for, for a fact. This is not a joke. Here is what the lunatic Ketchup Kerry said. 
There's something different about what happened from Charlie Hebdo, and I think everybody would feel that, Kerry said. According to the State Department's transcript, there was a sort of, sort of, particularized focus and even legitimacy in terms of, not a legitimacy, but a rationale that you could attach yourself to somehow and say, okay, they're really angry because of this and that. I rest my case, impeach them all, try them for insanity. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. As I outlined this fall at the United Nations, we have a comprehensive strategy using all elements of our power, military, intelligence, economic, development, and the strength of our communities. We have always understood that this would be a long-term campaign. There will be setbacks and there will be successes. The terrible events in Paris were obviously a terrible and sickening setback. Send Fredo off to do this, send Fredo off to do that. Let Fredo take care of some Mickey Mouse nightclub somewhere. I can handle things, I'm smart. Not like everybody says. Like dumb, I'm smart and I want the stick. You know, in a Shakespearean uh, play, there are three sons portrayed as in The Godfather. There's the strong, mercurial, militant son, as in the form of uh, the first one. I forget his name, or they call him played by James Caan. I don't know what his name was in the in the play. Then there was the middle, so the smart, calculating one played by Al Pacino. And then there's the weak, foolish son played by uh, the guy who played Frito. Which of the three sons is Barack Obama? if not the Frito character. You see, there is a dance of death in the West right now, an actual death in the Middle East, courtesy of the Islamo-fascists. Meanwhile, the Caesar in the White House entertains himself with a thousand sycophants, partying on behind closed doors as if the Islamo-fascist hand will not touch them. He thinks he's protected from this new plague, the black death of radical Islam. You see, we're facing something the West hasn't had to deal with since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th centuries. When those religious wars ended in one place, they began in another. They lasted for over 100 years. And the same thing is happening right now. Make no mistake about it, the radical Muslims are on the war path, and they are against everyone else. They are against Muslims who are not as fanatical. They are against the members of all other religions. They think they are going to take us back to some pristine religious period in human history that never actually occurred. It is all complete rubbish. These faith warriors live lower than the pigs they despise. For example, they kidnap and rape eight-year-old girls and say the Quran authorizes it. They are not purists. They're killers. They are Nazis in headscarves. They aren't leading a religious revival. They're trying to take us back to a state of barbarism that has been extinct for 1,200 years. This is a barbaric revolution, and we have a man in the White House who denies its existence. But whether he chooses to acknowledge it or not, it's going to continue until someone puts a stop to it. Why would any government bring in unvetted Muslim immigrants at a time like this? It would seem that only an insane prince would do this to his country. But Obama is not insane. He's stoned. He's stoned on the orthodoxy of the progressive left. Obama and his supporters are drunk on their ideology. They think they're going to create a progressive utopia by continuing their attack on all Western values. This is precisely how great civilizations of the past declined and eventually fell. They rejected the values that made them great and degenerated into narcissism and selfishness. They kept on partying until they were not too weak, until they were too weak to defend themselves. Then the unthinkable happened. They fell. That's the opening page to Government Zero, now in its fifth printing. Now, if it was only about a book, I'd be celebrating, but it's not about a book. It's about trying to awaken America before it is absolutely too late. Some would say it's too late already. 
Some would say that even if you convince one relative at a Thanksgiving dinner to at least open their eyes to the dance of death that Obama is conducting as an orchestra leader, they might just not vote for Hillary Clinton, who's a continue of Obama in address. Some would say it's too late for that. I'm an optimist. I'm the perennial optimist. I think that we can still survive. You talk about the dance of death in the West. You go to my Facebook page. I found this in the Daily Mail yesterday. I was shocked. Michelle dances as the world bleeds. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that this woman has such a lack of self-respect and is so disconnected from reality herself, or arrogant is maybe the better word, that she dances the Congo while hosting a Broadway workshop at a time like this. It's unbelievable to me. And then she gives a speech about oppression and how she was oppressed as a young girl and how it's unfair and there's an income inequality. What a, what a group these two are. I think I should take some calls right now, but wait, 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 wait. It's hour two. Let me do something else. Let's go to some sound bites that I haven't played yet. Carry on this, carry on that, carry on. Bro. Oh, this is something you have to hear. Here is the CIA director himself. John Brennan, talking not about ISIS, but about climate change as a cause of ISIS. I swear to God, these people are crazy. Listen to clip 11. In the past three years, there have been more outbreaks of instability than at any time since the collapse of the Soviet Union, matching the rate we saw during decolonization in the 1960s. This has not been a period of protests and government. This has not just been a period of protests and government change, but a violent insurgency and, in particular, a breakdowns in many states' ability to govern. Ongoing conflicts in Syria, Iraq, Ukraine, Yemen, and Libya, and parts of Africa are clear examples. All right. So thus far, he's making a case for these breakdowns. Now listen to the punchline. This is the head of the number one intelligence agency in America in clip 12. When CIA analysts look for deeper causes of this rising instability, they find nationalistic, sectarian, and technological factors that are eroding the structure of the international system. They also see socioeconomic trends, the impact of climate change, and other elements that are a cause for concern. Would you ever believe that the head of America's number one intelligence agency would make such an idiotic statement as this? He knows very well that radical Islam has been at war with the world for 1,200 years. He knows it has nothing to do with climate change. But then he doubles down in clip 13, showing that he's just a mouthpiece for the progressive Islamist left in clip 13. Mankind's relationship with the natural world is aggravating these problems and is a potential source of crisis itself. Oh, stop right Last there. So year was the, words, the, bombers, the bombers in Paris blew up the dancers because of global warming. I didn't hear them scream, I'm doing this for global warming. I didn't hear them say, we're doing this for I for uh, Gaia. They said they were doing it for Syria, meaning they're doing it for uh, Allah. And by the way, as they blew themselves up, they said, Allah Akbar. They made no reference of global warming. This is where the idiocy is coming from. It's coming right from the White House and the entire cabal around them. I think that they're all crazy. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how in the world they get away with this without people standing up and saying, wait a minute, that's insane. Listen to clip 13, the entire clip, and you tell me what you think of CIA Director John Brennan after this. Mankind's relationship with the natural world is aggravating these problems and is a potential source of crisis itself. Last year was the warmest on record, and this year is on track to be even warmer. Extreme weather along with public policies affecting food and water supplies, can worsen or create humanitarian crises. Of the most immediate concern, sharply reduced crop yields in multiple places simultaneously could trigger a shock in food prices with devastating effect, especially in already fragile regions such as Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. Now, first of all, by the way he's reading it, you could see he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an empty, he's an empty shell, another straw man. Another straw man controlled by the White House, put in by the White House, and whoever put the White House in power, put him in power. The straw man doesn't even know what he's talking about. He couldn't even read the script well. But he launches from terrorism to crop yields in a way that makes no sense whatsoever. If you were grading him as a college student, what would you give him on that, on that speech? You'd say, John, I'm sorry, but you made no sense. You tried to prove that climate change had something to do with global jihad, but John, 
surely you know history, John. You're an intelligent man. You're the head of the CIA. One of your great analysts from uh, Yale.